Okay, so, so, so far we have seen the uh, comparison based sorting algorithm and we have seen that we have proved that by the help of decision tree that if you are using comparison based sorting algorithm we cannot go, we cannot uh, go faster than the L log n. Okay. So, now we talk about linear time sorting algorithm where, where we will not do comparison between the elements. Uh, but we will see the value of the element based on that we will do the uh, we will do the uh, sorting. So, this is for, so we will discuss three uh, such sorting algorithm one is counting sort, radix sort, bucket sort. So, let us start with the uh, counting sort this is so this is one, one example of linear time sorting algorithm. So, the, but this is not a not a comparison based sort, comparison based sorting. So, that means, uh, that means no comparison between the element, no comparison between the element. Okay. So, we are not doing any comparison between the elements. So, that is the basically, uh, so that is why we could reduce it to the linear time. So, this is, uh, okay. so for this we need to have some assumption like, so suppose this is our number. So, this is the input, what are the input? Input are say a array of number and here we are assuming the value. So, we have to concern about the value of this number. So, we have to bound this uh, numbers are coming from this range. So, we have to fix the range of this number. So, that is also part of the input. So, that is basically where a i is coming from k. So, k is the maximum value we are allowing this number to take. Okay. So, this is also part of the input. So, that means, we are fixing the range of the input. So, that is one of the uh, one of the criteria of this sorting algorithm. So, we have to uh, we have to mention the range of these numbers otherwise we cannot sort this because basically based on that we need to take the auxiliary array. So, the output with the, so this is the input output will be in a B array which is basically sorted, but we need to take a extra storage or extra uh, or auxiliary storage here. So, this is the uh, these are basically you can say bucket auxiliary storage. So, this is denoted by C and this will be based on this range k. Okay. So, based on the value k we need to take this extra memory. So, this is these are not obviously in place sort. Okay. So, this auxiliary so this this storage also is a part of the input. So, we need to take a extra storage. So, so this is the range has to be fixed at the time of the input. So, once we fix the range then we can allocate the memory or the storage for that. Okay. So, this is the input output and the uh, auxiliary storage. Now, we have to write the pseudo code for this counting sort. So, so, basically the basically we are going to sort this number into the B array which is also of size n, but with the help of a extra another array which is the auxiliary array C array whose range is from 1 to k and k is the maximum value of the input we are allowing the size not the size the value input can take. Say for example, if we have a array A array is say uh, 
2, 4, 5 and then say 11. So, if this is our input, so now our k is basically 11. So, basically our numbers are coming from 1 to 11. So, k is the maximum value we are allowing as the input. So, we are having a range of the input. So, we are bounding the input to have for to, uh, to come from this range. So, that is one of the uh, restriction uh, one of the criteria for this. So, that means, if k is 11 then so this we are going to sort in b array. Okay. So, b is also this 4 b array and but we need to take a c array of size 11. So, so c array is of size 11. So, c array will be 1, 2, 3, 4 dot 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 11, 1, 2, 3, 4, 11. So, this is the auxiliary array we are going to, uh, we need to take for this algorithm. Okay. So, now let us write the pseudo code for this counting sort. So, this k is the range of the input. Okay. So, counting sort. Okay, so, first of all we have to uh, fill the C array, we have to initial initialize the C array by 0, C is just a frequency or we can say C are the bucket and we can fill the bucket like this. Anyway, so we will come to that. So, for i is equal to 1 to k. So, size of the C R is k. So, we fill it, we initial, we put the count as 0. Okay. So, this is the uh, initialization and then, then we read the array. So, we have given the A array of size n. So, this is our A array and this is our C array of size 1 to k. So, we initialize this all by 0 and then we read this A array and we accordingly to that we put the frequency in C array. So, for so for j is equal to 1 to n, so this is the A array. So, we read A j, so this is particular j, so we read A j. So, depending on the value of A j, so if this is say 2, then we go to the this and we put plus 1 like this. So, this is sort of frequency we are counting, frequency of the that particular number to come in. Okay. So, what we do? Now, we do we do this A of a C of A j C of A j we increase by 1 C of A j plus 1. Okay. So, this is just a frequency counting. So, the number of depending on the value of the element, so this is the frequency count of that element. Okay. So, after this what we are doing? So, up to this if we just count the frequency, say suppose we have say input say like this, suppose we have input. Uh, say suppose our A array is uh, 4 1 3 4 3. Okay. Suppose, this is our A array. So, this is 4 is the maximum size. So, C array is 1 2 uh, 3 4. This is our C array. Now, what we are doing? This, this step we are initializing by 0 and we are just counting the frequency. So, we first read this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, there are 5 elements. So, we first 4, so we put it plus 1, so this is 1, then 1, 1, this is 3, 1, this is 4 again, so this is plus 1, 2, this is 3, this is 2. Okay. So, this is the execution after this. Okay. So, now now, we know that there is only one 1. So, we can just 
print the one. So, if you put a bracket, we can just print the one, then we know there is no two. So, we will just ignore that and we know there is two three. So, we can print this two three and we know there is two four. So, we can print this two four. So, sort, so sort it. So, should we stop here? Because you just if we just read the array, read the C C I mean frequency wise, that is it. So, we can just get the sorted one, but should we stop that? Stop here. No, because we want a extra property in this algorithm. What is that? That is called stability. stable sorting algorithm or stability. Okay, or stable stable sorting algorithm. We want the the uh, this sorting algorithm is stable. Stability means it should preserve the uh, between the equal element it should preserve the ordering of the equal element. Like like if we print just this so, this 3 and this 3, we do not know which 3 come first in the input. We know this 3 came first than this 3. So, we want in the output this 3 should come first than this 3. So, suppose there is a small tag over here. So, these are very important for satellite data. So, if we see the Google map, some if we just capture the images, so two, two images looks like same, but they are not exactly same. So, for those say suppose this 3 contents say 3 point we put a tag over here 1 and we put a tag over here 2 to indicate that this 3 come this 3 came first than this 3. So, in the output also we want this 3 should appear first than this 3. Okay. So, that is called the stability. So, stability means the input ordering should preserve in the output ordering. So, that if between the equal elements. So, that is the that is called stability. So, we want that stability that is why we have to execute few more we have to write we have to uh, uh, do few more step for this counting sort in order to get this stability. Okay. Let us just complete this pseudo code. So, uh, so for this what we do we first uh, have the cumulating frequency let us just is this for the time being. Okay, so, we will come back to this example again. So, let us just do the uh, for i is equal to, to k, we will just uh, take the cumulating frequency 2 to k. So, we do c i basically c i plus C of i minus 1. Okay, and then we fill the B bucket like this for J in down to 1. For J in down to 1, what we do? We just fill this B of B of so, basically a j we are going to fill in this b of c of a j. Okay. So, this a j we are going to fill in b of c of a j and we decrease c of a j by 1 and c of a j is decreased by C of a j minus 1. So, C of a j is decreased by C of a j. So, this is 8, this is 9. Okay. C of a j is decreased by C of a j minus 1. So, this is the bucket filling. Okay. Let us take an example. So, we take the same earlier example. Suppose, we have this input a array. There are 5 element 4 1 3 4 3. So, this is a array. 
Okay. So, this is A R A. Now, uh, so we take a, so we are going to fill this into the B R A. So, B is also has to be 5 element 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now, we have a C I A. So, this maximum k is 4. So, C is 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this is B R A and this is C R A. Okay. So, now we just execute this code. Now, we fill the, the this is the initialization step. So, we, we initialize this C by 0 and then we put the frequency. So, after this oh, there is only 1 1 no 0 a uh, no 2 2 2. So, this is the after this uh, frequency of C. Now, after that we have we have to compute this C prime or cumulating frequency. So, we can say this is C prime. So, this is basically our new C. So, cumulating frequency means we just uh, so, it is starting from 2. So, up to 2, so this plus this 1 and then, then we have uh, this plus this, this plus this. So, 2 plus 3, this plus this, so 5. So, this is the after this cumulating frequency, we have this position of this array. Okay. So, this is the C array after the execution of that loop. So, 4 5. Okay. Now, 1 1 3 5. So, this is our C array after this execution of this loop. So, this is meaning of this is up to this how many elements are there? 1 element. Up to this how many elements are there? 3 element. Up to this how many elements are there? 5 element because the, the, that total 5 elements are there. This is the sense. So, now this is our C R A. Now, we go for the exact bucket filling by this loop. Okay. So, we start with n. So, we just look at this and we have to put this into some of the B R A. So, how we can put this? So, put it by this way. So, we go to the C of A j. So, A j is 4, A j sorry A j is 3. So, C of A j. So, this is basically 1, 2, 3, 4. So, C of A j is basically 3. C of A j is 3. So, we will put it into here. So, this 3 we put it into here. Okay. And we decrease this by 2. I mean this C of A j is decreased by C of A j minus 1. So, this now this value is 2. So, what is the meaning of this? Meaning of this is if again we see a 3 and that will going to put in this position and that will assure the stability. Is this clear? If again we see a 3, we are going to put it here in the place of 2 uh, in the here. So, that will give us the stability and that we are doing a uh, n down to 1. Anyway, let us complete this. So, we reduce this by now it is now this value is 2. Okay, this is the C R A. Okay, now this is our next element. So this is the this loop, J loop, n down to one. So now it is four. So we go to C four. C four is five. So we put it here, this four, and we decrease by this one. So what is the meaning of that? Meaning of that is, if again we see a four, we are going to put it in this place. So that will give us the stability. Okay. So, now this is basically 4. Okay. Now, uh, we are here 3. So, we go to here. Now, it is telling us we put this 3 in here and we reduce this by 1. So, that means again if we see a 3, we are going to put it here. So, now come here so, C 1, C 1 is basically 1 and we put it, it here and we reduce this by 0. So, there, there is no more 1. Now, come here. So, this is C 4. So, we go to the C 4, it is now 4. So, we are going to put it here, this 4. 
okay, and this is reduced by now 3. So, done sorted not only sorted this speeds up the stability also. So, this is stable stable in the sense that uh, stable means uh, the we piece up the no uh, it is pizza uh, input ordering is uh, preserving in the output ordering. If this happen then it is called stable sorting algorithm. So, which is the comparison based sort is stable quick sort think about it. Okay. Now, here, here this is stable because this 3 and this 3 are same these are two equal element, but this 3 is coming first then this 3. So, if you put a little tag over here 0 0.1 0 0.2. So, this 0 0.1 is coming before then 0 0.2 even these 4 are equal, but this 4 is coming before this 4. So, the input ordering is preserved between the equal element. So, that is the property we want in our sorting algorithm and to to have this property we need to execute this extra step otherwise we could stop at this place. Okay, this is this up to the frequency this kind of bucketing I mean we have the buckets we are filling the buckets and then we are print the uh, frequency of that numbers, but we need this extra property to have achieve this extra property which is stability we have to execute this and this is a stable sorting algorithm. Okay, so, now we have we want to uh, we want to have the time complexity of this. So, let us talk about we want to analysis this code. So, this is the code and now we want to have the run time of this code analysis of this code. Okay, so, so, analysis of counting sort. Okay, basically, we do the runtime analysis. What is the time complexity of this counting sort runtime? So, let us look at the code. So, so here there are few for loops. So, this is basically a for loop. So, this will take the order of k, this is a loop of size k and here we are initializing this. So, we are in asymptotic notation this initialization will take the constant effort. Uh, so, asymptotic sense so that is why it is theta of k and this will give us theta of n the filling of the fe that frequency and this will again give us the theta of k and this exact bucket filling will give us theta of n. Okay. So, that means, uh, so what is the time complexity then? So, time is basically adding if we add this to it is basically theta of n plus k. Okay. So, now what is k? k is the range, range of the element. So, we are fixing the uh, if we fix some range say if k is order of n then the time is basically theta of n if k is this. So, it is linear. So, it is linear provided the range is also bounded by n bounded by uh, sorry bounded by the number of uh, input. So, if there are say n input and uh, now we are bounding by say k is say uh, some uh, c n or some constant n or something, but if the k is say n square 
then this is the dominating term. If k is n square, then the time complexity is basically what? So, so the time is basically order of n plus k. Now, depending on which is dominating, if k is now, the case one if k is big O of n, then the time is linear. Otherwise, if k itself is a quadratic, k is say n square okay, or n log n, then we have what? Then the time will be dominating by order of k, it is basically order of n square, which is basically worse than the comparison based sort. Okay. So, that is the that is the condition this to be a linear time sorting algorithm, if the k is order of n, other than that it is not possible. So, like k is say 5 n, 100 n, something like that, some constant into n, then we can have this sorting algorithm to be linear. Otherwise, it is a depending on the value of k, it will be either order of k or order of n. So, next class we will talk about radix sort and the bucket sort, that is those two are also uh, another sorting algorithm uh, and the linear time sorting algorithm. Thank you.